Green Bay Packers needed a win yesterday against the Minnesota Vikings to keep their playoff hopes alive. And now, with that happening, they control their destiny going into the playoffs or with a chance to go into the playoffs, all dependent on how they perform next week against the Detroit Lions. And honestly, despite putting up 41 points, it was not the offense that shined brightest, as you'll see with the highlights in the background. The special teams unit was able to get a 105 kickoff yard or kickoff touchdown return. And the defense was able to get three interceptions, a forced fumble, and a touchdown off of a 75-yard interception. Pick six by Darnell Savage early in the first quarter. Kirk Cousins, or as they like to call him, Kirk Thugless, was not able to get much going in this game. They were able to get a couple of points there late in the fourth quarter. But he finished the day 18 for 31. 205 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. Nick Mullins finished the day four for four with 57 yards and a touchdown. So maybe he's a better quarterback. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Not a better quarterback, obviously. But Alexander Madison in this running game struggled to get going. He had eight for 38. Dalvin Cook only managed nine for 27. Jalen Naylor was actually the highest or the best receiving person on their team as far as yards go. He had three for 89 and a touchdown. TJ Hawkinson, a lot of targets for him, seven for 59. And KJ Osborne as well, seven for 59. But he was able to get into the end zone there with the only, only, Kirk Cousins touchdown if you go down there at the bottom you see Adam Thielen one catch for 16 yards and Justin Jefferson one catch for 15 yards this offense was almost completely shut down by the game or the Green Bay Packers defense and as you'll see the Packers offense was very very efficient as well Aaron Rodgers 15 for 24 159 yards only one touchdown no interceptions though he took care of the ball Aaron Jones 14 carries 111 yards wasn't able to punch it in but A.J. Dillon did get one for himself 12 for 41 and a touchdown Patrick Taylor one of the backup running backs was able to get five for 10 in his limited time going to the receiving game Alan Lazard 5 for 59 and no touchdowns. Robert Tanyan caught the sole receiving touchdown there. 3 for 52 and a touchdown with Aaron Rodgers up top also getting a rushing touchdown as you would see early or later in that third quarter. The defense, as I mentioned, Adrian Amos with an interception. Jonathan Ford with an interception, also known as Rudy Ford, and Darnell Savage with one as well. They were able to force a fumble, and Jair Alexander was able to have himself a magnificent game with help from the secondary, but also a very, very good coverage game against Justin Jefferson. And that is going to be the complete recap of the game. The Vikings went down 41-17, to and they fall now to 12 and 4 on the season as the Packers fall or actually rise to 8 and 8 on the year as you can see this was a very very sought after game there was so much going on in the media and it was a very surprising outcome the Packers end up actually finishing with less total yards than the Vikings the Vikings had 244 total passing yards to the Packers 152 Packers had 163 total rushing yards to the Vikings 102 but that adds up to 346 for the Vikings and 315 for the Packers so a very confusing number system there if you really look at it but at the end of the day what all that matters is the Vikings turned the ball over four times two times in the red zone there against the Packers they had to punt it twice Packers had to punt it three times they only allowed two sacks so both teams offensive lines were fairly efficient but the Packers were able to get pressure and they were able to hurry up Kirk Cousins a lot more than the Vikings did against Aaron Rodgers and the time of possession is basically the biggest, um, in my opinion, probably the biggest factor in this one. The Gamecocks, why do I keep saying the Gamecocks? Because I'm always talking about the Gamecocks. The Packers actually finished the game with a 34.0, 34 minutes, 4 seconds um, time of possession compared to the Vikings only being able to get 25 minutes and 56 seconds. So overall, the Packers dominated this one. And what does that mean for the Packers going forward? They are going to need a lot of a lot of prayer and a lot of luck to get into the playoffs and I don't mean that by saying we need this team to lose we need this team to lose we need this team to win we need this team to win no we just need to beat the Lions something that as easy as it has seemed in the past this year is not going to be something that's that easy the Lions have had an offense that has been very explosive an offense that has been very dynamic all year long they have had a great offensive unit led by Amon Ross St. Brown um, Jared Goff has had himself an amazing season, especially at home. 
um, and I'm not quite sure if the Lions or the Packers are playing at home this time. Well, I can actually go ahead and look that up. They are playing in Lambeau Field, so the Packers have the advantage there. Jared Goff has been a very poor road quarterback for the most part, but he has shown flashes where he can perform very well. So going into this Lions game, there are going to be a bunch of keys for this defense and for this offense. The offense needs to play good enough to get us in this game or keep us in this game, and the defense needs to limit this very explosive Lions offense last week against the Bears they were able to find some footing in the running game Jamal Williams former Packer we love him here but we don't want to see him win um, Jamal Williams found his footing as he had a, has been great this year and DeAndre Swift also found his footing in the run game so the Lions are very two-dimensional they have become a good passing and a good running unit and we are going to have to Thankfully, they don't have TJ Hawkinson anymore, but we are going to have to lock down and we are going to have to have ourselves an amazing defensive game. It has been a while since I've said that about the Packers, but today or yesterday they did it against the Vikings and now they have a chance to do that against the Detroit Lions and hopefully, just hopefully, they can get themselves into the playoffs. What happens from there, we will never know but I am very, very excited to see how we can do. And I would love to hear your guys' predictions for the Detroit Lions-Packers game next Sunday, I believe. And I would love to see your guys' score predictions. What do you think we're going to need to do to win that game? As this is my first time doing a recap of a Packers-Lions or Packers-Vikings game or a Packers game in general. Something that hopefully I can continue to do in the future. And thank you guys for hopping on the ship and joining my channel here. If you do, hit the subscribe button. If you don't. Go ahead and do it if you feel like the need or you feel like you enjoy my content. If you do not, I completely understand. As long as you hit the like button, turn on post notifications if you do end up su subscribing. Thank you all for watching this one. I shall talk to you guys next episode. Peace.